Welcome back to another episode of Man Cave Movie Night. My name is Lucas. And I'm right. Niall. <laughs> yeah. And that's how we're starting Ooh. this week, I guess. So <laughs> <laughs> this week we're going to talk about a very... It's already a perfect episode. I know. Yep. We we can just we're stop here and have another perfect episode just like we did last time. Um, this week we're talking about James Gunn, who is a very prolific and relevant director. Because that's always what we talk about, our prolific and relevant people. And with that, you may have heard of a movie called Superman Legacy, which he has written and will be directing coming out in 2025. And with that, you may have also heard that Henry Cavill is being recast, which means they're on the hunt for a new actor for Superman. Oh, And I think I would be a pretty good Superman. Do you guys agree or what? Absolutely, I agree. I think you're tall you're allergic to green rocks i mean you'd be great man exactly yeah. and that's all you need you have to be obscenely tall just like henry cavill was and just like christopher reeves yep. um was rest in peace but um yeah. i'm gonna just send you guys a couple lines here really quick and brandon uh, ruth is another actor who has played superman yeah but we don't care about him okay, so uh Niall, do. i want you to read this line to me and then i'm gonna play off of it as though i'm auditioning for superman you know yeah, just like how you do so, so you're lex luther and then I'm gonna I'm gonna respond. Okay. Okay, you ready? You want me to like do a Lex Luthor type voice? Or well, do you, want you don't have just to like I'm you reading just, the sides. You can just do it. You just can't take away from my performance as Superman. So sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna read the sides. Yeah, remember who the star is. Okay. Yeah, you gotta remember who the star is. Yeah. <laughs> it's Kryptonite, Superman. A little piece of the rock you were born on. I've spared no expense to make you feel right at home. I never lie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I can see. I, can I feel see like that, that was pretty good. I feel yeah, like that was I, pretty good. Okay. I like it. Um, uh, Jared, this one is I'm a little, for you. I, I don't know if I'm uh, concerned about your performance. The, the writing maybe is a little weird, but I guess no. that's on James Gunn. That's not on you. Well, this is from Superman 1, uh, the original movie from the 70s. Is that response? Uh, it might be the wrong response, but <laughs> okay. it's a line yeah, that yeah, Superman yeah. says, so okay, that's what great. matters. That's really what, what's most important. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Jared, this is for you. Yeah, Go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. You will bow down before me, Jor-El. I swear it. No matter if it takes an eternity, you will bow down before me, both you and one day your heirs. Is that how a warped brain like you gets its kids? excuse me let me try that one more time no, sorry take, let's take two <laughs> yeah no that's sorry all good. sorry it's all good. i'm so sorry i uh I got one I'm more just time. getting too much in my head i just stumbled over it sorry i'll, I'll try again yeah maybe <laughs> jared just give him the little end of that oh one yeah, yeah. Again. both yeah, you that last one day your heirs is that how a warped brain like you gets its kicks by planning the death of innocent people mm. pretty good pretty that's good a good line. pose good. that was a really superman pose thank you yeah i like okay it. um I just feel like you're you're too Henry Cavill right now. Yeah, right? like true. I'm getting I, a lot of that. We're, we're replacing him, so we don't sure. want to just a, a duplicate. Could you give me a just like a variant? Kind of do your own thing. My own thing. Well, I, you, I I'll, think, I'll, I'll try that with this next one. I think yeah. I think this next line gives you a real opportunity to kind of show, you know, the difference between like the Zack Snyder Superman, yeah, and maybe a a, a brighter, more comic comic a gooder, accurate, a, a like, yeah. Um, what a Superman! Superman, I'm here to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. Now that was original. Yeah, that was the one. good. That was that's really good. I really felt good about that. That was wow. Just hit really well. And how? And how? And how? Okay, I feel like that should be enough content for James Gunn to be able to look at us, find us. First of all, he'll obviously be listening to this podcast. And so yeah, everybody tag James Gunn though. Yeah, tag sure. James Gunn so he'll be sure to listen to this. And then so that he We want to make sure that he'd be sure to listen to this. He'd be sure to listen to this podcast. When he for sure is be sure to listen to it, then he can send oh, it you know, to No, I should have shaved before doing this. <laughs> oh man, now he's gonna say Superman never has a beard. Superman oh, doesn't have so a beard. Dumb. Here's, do... here's the magic of of superman we can remove your facial hair for you yeah facial oh, hair nobody will be so able to true. tell and no one, no one will can... be able to tell they did it so flawlessly already they can just do it again with me okay it, perfect it james create... gunn we know you're watching we know you want me for superman give me a call my number is 
welcome back yet again. We say welcome back all the time because we just love having you with us here at Man Cave Movie Night, where my name is Lucas. My name is and Jared. My name is Niall. And this week we're talking about James Gunn. We've already talked a little bit. Of, excuse me. A little burpy got no one going there. Uh, <laughs> thing for an audio platform. <laughs> well, you couldn't hear it. It was an inaudible burp. So Hopefully. that makes it acceptable. Hopefully yeah, you could so. see it, though. You probably see it. Yeah. But um, we're going to talk about James Gunn. And I'm just going to read a little blurb from his Wikipedia because obviously that's the best place to get information on a person. It says that James Gunn <laughs> is an American filmmaker and executive. He began his career as a screenwriter in the mid 90s, starting at Troma Entertainment with Tromeo and Juliet 1997. He then began working yeah. as a director, starting with the horror comedy film Slither and moving to the superhero genre with Super. Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, The Suicide Squad, and the forthcoming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. In 2022, Warner Brothers Discovery hired James Gunn and Peter Safran to become co-chairman and co-CEOs of DC Studios. That's a pretty good, concise you know, bio on a guy. I mean, he's had some pretty serious and cool and good accolades. And personally, everything that I've seen from him, I've really enjoyed. You know, he's not got like a thousand things in his repertoire as far as like stuff he's done, but everything that I've watched that he's either written or directed or like executive produced, because I guess technically executive produced Endgame and like Infinity War. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's yeah, all good yeah. stuff. So what about you guys? I like him. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now I'm coughing. We're just covering all of the audio no-no sins. Um, I like him. I will admit and i think i'm admitting admitting this for all three of us haven't seen slither haven't <laughs> seen super i have seen super i've not seen slither yeah, but i've well, heard it's very good will you Where pretend that you good. haven't so that we can all i'll pretend it. that i haven't yep so okay, that great. all of us are equal we haven't seen slither and super yep. right and um so like we're calling this james gunn but loki we're probably just going to be talking about guardians and then um new dc like suicide squad new dc stuff and and that'll kind of be the focus just want to be up front about that now so that we don't get yeah we're probably not gonna die the fans. <laughs> yeah yeah like, ton of bro, fans. i'm sure yeah his horror side stuff is really cool and like dawn of the dead which he wrote and you know some of that other stuff is really awesome we just haven't personally consumed it yet and so we're just going to go off of what we have consumed, which is a superhero stuff, which is good, I think, at least. Pretty good. Likely. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Have you guys seen Peacemaker as well? That was a DC thing he did. It was a TV show. I have gotten wrote and directed gotten around to it. It's it's in the plan. I've never wanted to watch it. Okay. Well, let me it's tell you. It's pretty universally <laughs> renowned as good. A, a yeah, good it's show. good. It's like yeah. it's like a yeah. random thing that you would not expect to be good, but it's actually quite fun. And I think Jared, it, it kind of has the boys vibes at times. So Jared, mm. I think you would enjoy it. I think it's kind of right up your alley in terms of like kind of more raunchy superhero stuff, and you know people die and people have genuine character development, and you know there's bad guys. So Jared famously only likes things if they're quite raunchy. Yeah, yeah. like to any, it's kind of like on Halloween, like you just put sexy in front of something. And then yeah. it's like, oh, I'm and a then... sexy cat. I'm a sexy nurse. I don't like cats. I don't like nurses, right? Right. I don't like superhero unless it's a raunchy superhero. Yeah. It's, his main, exactly. it's his complaint with the Toy Story franchise. <laughs> yeah. It's not raunchy enough or sexy. It's not yeah, raunchy yeah. enough, yeah. If they made raunchy Toy it, honestly, Story. All, if... Honestly, all Pixar, he just has Toy Story 5, colon, yeah. it's raunchy and sexy this time. <laughs> Cars two, that. Cars two got close. Cars two gets close. <laughs> he gets close. Yeah. Cars two gets close. Let's let's hope Cars four brings it around town too. <laughs> Although I don't think that's happening, unfortunately. It was yeah, Cars four. Happens. This time it's live action. Oh <laughs> man, Cars four, Fast Eleven. That, oh come on, Dwayne that's a pretty good to idea. A different Fast um, franchise. <laughs> Niall, of course, is referencing the fact that Dwayne Johnson, our friend of the podcast, shout out to Dwayne, yeah, um, today Zoe. announced Let's F and Go. Let's F and Go. Sip your Zoe. Zoa, <laughs> a frequent uh, collaborator and sponsor of the podcast as well. Shout out to Zoa. Um, announced today that there is a live action Moana movie coming out. So we're making this episode in April of 2023. Movie probably won't come out until 2025 or six. Hopefully we're gonna make the hot out. prediction now that it either won't come out or if it does it's bad and it flops if either of those two oh. things don't happen 
I'll give you a dollar. Yeah. What, Just Venmo do you me. still make a movie when you announce it and it gets 100% <laughs> negative consumer feedback on the <laughs> announcement? <laughs> well, like, see, we'll see, here's a, here's a fun way to tie that into James Gunn. He got fired from Guardians 3 back in 2018. True. And when that happened, there was 100% negative feedback. People were like, don't even make the movie. It makes no sense to make it if you don't have the guy who made it like make the conclusion of the like trilogy right. mm -hmm. and you know they did they hired him back so that he can make it and it comes out yeah. next month so this is kind of like an anticipatory episode for that because we'll make an actual episode about that movie when it comes out but um let's talk about those guardians movies uh niall i think you have a question in relation to those correct i have a question in relation to those Beautiful. and the question is well actually i think Jared has a question about. Oh this. no, Jared! Sorry, yeah, my mind, if you my want. mind is constantly a mess. Jared, like I was, I'm, I'm all about this yes and, you know, sure. improv mentality. I was just going to switch questions with Nile. Well, I okay. was going to say, well, I can have a question, but it's not going to be the question. You want me to ask it? Well, I'll ask my question, then you can ask your follow. -up. Yeah, let's have. Okay. Uh... Well, it wasn't going to be a follow up. It was just going to be a. But yeah, you ask your question. Yeah, my question is, <laughs> Guardians and the Galaxy One and Two oh yeah. dude that's actually a really good perspective i had never thought about it that way yeah one and two huh yeah mm, niall i think you should go first all right because i just um, need a second to okay to think so on it. let me just get this <laughs> right out of the way <laughs> i think that guardians of the galaxy is this generation's like star wars you know Ooh, of just wow. a really cool certainly like, better than this generation's actual star wars movies <laughs> yeah, <true>. right <laughs> it like when you saw guardians of the galaxy you like a lot of people most people didn't know what to expect um even like relative comic book fans like me i'd heard of the guardians of the galaxy hadn't read a comic didn't really know even the the lineup that game james gunn chose was a much more recent lineup of the Guardians of the Galaxy than the original lineup was. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, even like fans of Guardians of the Galaxy probably didn't know what to expect because maybe it wasn't the lineup they were familiar with. And so um, when it came out, I think it just had that almost like mystical, um, like, well, it's a Marvel movie, so it's probably going to be good, but we don't really know. And then you go and see it, and it's just this insanely vibrant movie with all of these different worlds attached to it and, and crazy character designs that don't feel out of place. Like, they feel like designs from the same universe, you know? And then wrap all of that around an actual, like, heartfelt and and emotional story. And it's just like... It, it, it's like the fun family sci-fi movie of this generation and i loved it so much and i remember going to the second one and loving it not as much as the first one but still really liking it and having gone back and watched it recently i'm like okay maybe i was just trying too hard for this to be the first one because the second one really is awesome i do I like the second one a lot i liked it much more on a second watch um but i just uh, I love like kind of hyper stylized movies mm -hmm. and this is one of the few that you get in the Marvel cinematic universe that doesn't just, just feel like a Marvel movie. Yeah. It movie. actually feels like its own movie yeah. and you can watch them independently of the other ones and not miss out on anything just cause you're like, Oh, I didn't watch the last Ant-Man movie. How am I going to watch the next guardians? Movie? <laughs> right. That's right. not at all the case with these ones. Yeah. Which is super refreshing, but I guess I'll talk about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Volume yeah, that was a good two. answer, Niall. Yeah, that was a really good it's answer. Really good, really good. Um, I remember distinctly um, when Guardians One came out. It was 2014, and my family and I were on vacation, and it was like, okay, well, there's this new Marvel movie that came out. Um, I guess we'll go see it. Um, and so we went to go see it, and it was awesome. You know, I was like 14 or 15 years old, and it was great. It was really, really awesome, and I you know, ever since then have loved those characters. And I think this movie is a testament to the fact that, you know, good characters is really what makes a movie or just a story good because those characters were completely unknown. Like for the, by, I mean, like by and large, no one really knew who the guardians were. Like some, you know, comic fans obviously did know who they were, 
but just in the general public's mind, they're just complete randos. And the fact that you can walk up to most people and say, Hey, who's rocket raccoon, who's Groot, who's Gamora. And people are like, Oh, hundred percent know exactly who that is. Like that's yeah. wild. Um, totally speaks to the quality of James Gunn's writing and directing and just how cool these stories are. I mean, obviously they've kind of showed up in other stuff since then rip their appearance in Thor four. Um, but <laughs> otherwise, I, everything I mean, it was a, it was just a small little thing at the it beginning, was just a small little thing that but it was you like, could, you and... could feel the lack of James Gunn. You there. really could. You know? It was just yeah, like rocket. Everyone says like one line, except for star Lord. who's kind of like, Hey, look, I'm the human guy and I'll kind of relate to Thor, my guy. Yeah. Also, I'm Chris Pratt, who audiences love. Well, and, and they, then, they had uh, great rapport or like, you know, on screen chemistry in Infinity War. Oh, yeah. And Which think... is why I was so bummed they didn't in Thor <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. it was just like, okay, cool. Yeah, I guess yeah, we're yeah. just going to neuter these characters' interactions. Um, but that's neither here nor there because we're talking about the positive stuff that James Gunn has done. And maybe well, we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. One well, currently, yeah, correct, 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 volume one and two. Yeah, focus. Um, I do love volume two as well. I, I remember seeing it in theaters and loving it as well. Um, and I'm kind of glad that it's taken so long for Guardians 3 to come out because it just kind of allows us to live with these characters a little bit more. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's a month from today, actually. Or tomorrow. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, tomorrow today. Yeah, depending on listener, listening. Probably. Um, but I yeah, I really love those movies. They're definitely some of my favorite in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And like I've said before, um, if Guardians 3 is bad, I'm just gonna give up on Marvel because there's just that's it, <laughs> oh, really. No. I mean, it's just like hey, man. after so many disappointments recently, it's like how much can you beat a man down before you expect him to keep getting back up? Like Captain America says, hey, not everyone's I Captain America, okay. I've got some bad news for you, Lucas. Uh oh. If Uh-oh. it's bad, it's Marvel's fault. But if it's good, it's James Gunn's fault. And that doesn't necessarily mean a positive future for yeah, Marvel. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, That's you fair. know, you know what I mean, though. Like, it's yeah. just, ugh. yeah. I if mean, Marvel's found a way to screw up James Gunn's Guardians, Guardians. of the Galaxy three, it's especially a bad it is deal. Especially you know? sad. But. I also love the holiday special, which wasn't technically a part of Jared's question, but I'm going to bring it up because I thought it was fun and good as well. Me too. Yeah, I thought it was stupid <laughs> in a waste of 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Mr. Sad and Mean Guy. That's me. <laughs> sad? <laughs> That's it's me. Sad. It's yeah, sad if you don't like Famously things. sad. Um, cool. Well, I'll answer the question now. Um, I, similar to you both, remember seeing this in theaters very, very vividly. I waited for it to go to the discount theater mm. in, our ta- in our town, and I ended up going with my grandma as an afterthought. Like, I was just fully going to miss this movie. Uh-huh. I did not expect anything from it. I didn't think it would be good. I didn't care about any of these characters. Honestly, like, the buzz was kind of like, yeah, I've heard it's like good Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but like i I don't ever remember it being like overwhelmingly like you have the junior high buzz can't be that popping i mean that's the age we were in (laughs) that is true um (laughs) but i do remember then just again one random thursday or something going to this movie with my grandma and just losing it like from scene one just laughing and caring and, and loving it so much and i'm like what are all these other marvel movies doing you know <laughs> like these this random group of a tree and like a raccoon yeah just <laughs> blew me away i think it you followed know? up thor 2 and iron man 3 as well which <laughs> were not popular <laughs> directly yeah. preceded um the winter soldier well there you go yeah so oh, like, that's true winter yeah, soldier and it, that came out the we same didn't really before. have that kind of captain america renaissance yet you know so it was i i you're totally right it was kind of preceded by some some weaker hits generally yeah i love iron man 3 everybody knows that Mm. we know that and james gunn knows it now yeah Yeah, and jared loves nice guys and i do love nice another shane black movie yes but we're not here and we're not there (laughs) 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 oh sorry i sometimes i just get sidetracked about shane black Shane Black. Shane Black, Predator. 
The, new, the new one. The new one. Did you guys watch that? No. <laughs> I heard it was stinky poopy batty. Um, yeah, but you know it wasn't. Guardians 1 and 2. That's so true. true. And I so I loved it in the theater. Um, and kind of, Lucas, you were just saying that it has to do with characters. And I think that is true. But I think one thing that this movie does right in accordance with all of the other great Marvel movies is it just understands the exact tone the you know what package they're trying to sell for the movie it knows exactly what the movie intends to be and then every element of the movie contributes to that so absolutely like same with um captain america the winter soldier knew exactly it was going for a spy thriller like espionage kind of movie everything contributed to that and it knocked it out of the park and so i think just tonally it was consistent uh and it was very refreshing it was very fun very exciting um yeah and the chemistry of the cast was just amazing oh yeah seriously they all get uh they got along really well in real life it seems as well which is kind of fun mm-hmm. yeah i mean two of the main characters are never on set because they're just voices but even right. then it's still cool um and one of them's just talking about cars all day <laughs> And how much and how better much he, he is loves. than Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> but know, also, please my come little back, brother, please come his little brother, brother Dwayne. Um, <laughs> I so James Gunn today released the soundtrack for Volume Three. Don't um, say anything about it. No, I was going to say I don't want to listen to it. Yeah, like, I saw that I it, and I'm like, I don't, don't want to know anything about that yet. I feel like that's kind of weird. He released it so early because I'm excited to kind of watch the movie and just mm-hmm. see what the songs are because I really like that with one obviously because you had no idea what it was going to be but especially with two because it was like oh man one did it so well yeah what's two going to be like and two does yeah. it just as well i think especially in the beginning with the little group dance the big yeah thing. mr blue sky yeah. and everything yeah. which it's mr blue sky obviously one of my my favorite genres is like 70s classic rock mm-hmm. right that whole decade i think is filled with gems and and so i've probably found mr blue sky or in high school sometime mm-hmm. right and, and that came out the end of our senior year yeah and so i was like i was familiar with it i'd showed one of our friends grantland we would play it in the car and then we got to the show and we didn't know what songs were going to be played mm-hmm. and then mr blue sky came on and we just did like this across the theater like what the <laughs> like <laughs> looking awesome. at each other that's so and cool i was like well that's sick that like people get to hear the song you know mm-hmm. and now yeah. i can't stop hearing it yep, yep. it's everywhere Which, well i do like with, that if it was any other song i don't know with something about the the soundtracks that he's curated i've heard all of the songs from the guardians volume one and two hundreds of times now oh it feels yeah. like oh yeah the, am i sick of any of them chugga, no chugga, 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 except chugga. maybe cherry bomb Oh, well, I, I was sick of Jerry Bomb when I heard it the first time. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Isn't that in an Edgar Wright movie too? Where he, Cherry Bomb? I don't think so. Mm, is it not in is Scott Pilgrim? Things, I don't know. It's not in Scott Pilgrim. Okay. I, I know that so. for a full on fact. But <laughs> that Cherry Bomb scene is like the only scene that I have an active complaint about out of either of these <laughs> movies. Because it's Cherry Bomb, first of all, which I don't like. Yeah. And it's like too loud. <laughs> Uh, cherry having like bomb. conversations like, uh, and she's shouting cherry bomb and you're kind of like, I, I feel like i want to hear what they're saying a little bit better than i am i yeah. do like that song actually that's yeah, maybe well, that's a hot take but i like uh, it. yeah that with, is a hot take but I think with with, <laughs> with um <laughs> mr blue sky yeah that was a that was a song that i like grew up listening to it's one of my dad's favorites because like Electric Light Orchestra also kind of exists in that like kind of prog world. They have a For lot sure. of weird, like, you know, weird stuff. And so my dad was always showing me that kind of stuff. And that was like a family anthem for a <laughs> long time. Yeah. And so it was like, it was one of those things where I think high school me was a little bit bummed when it was in the movie, just because it's like, well, now this thing that I knew about and I'm like, I'm cool and hipster and now everybody else knows about it, but I knew yeah. about it when it was like cool. In classic to, yeah. gatekeeping fashion. Exactly. Yeah. And now I'm just glad, like looking back on it, I'm just like, it's a great song and I'm glad that it had an opportunity to be heard by more mm-hmm. people. You know? no, I th- I and think... that's like, I'm sure how, a lot of people who lived through the 70s and 80s and whatnot 
felt about the first one and the second one is like all of this cool music is coming I guess I guess be attractive to multiple generations um by having that music for them that also is going to be appealing to us because music is very often timeless but then also just being a marvel movie and drawing those kind of younger crowds it's it really is like from a marketing business standpoint just an excellent <laughs> plan of attack yeah. to make sure that your movie is going to be appealing but not in a cheap way you know like it's appealing to everybody in a way that is artistic and serves the story and serves the art. And it's, it's really, really smart. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, we talked about the movie soundtrack stuff last week or just so recently. And he was the guy that none of us answered, but all of us right. knew what was one of the answers. Right. So, <laughs> which I mean is by far one of the most popular soundtracks of the last oh, 20, yeah. oh. 30, 50 years, you yeah, know, seriously. Um, I, I want to ask while we're still on the guardians, what is your favorite um guardian song from uh, the the soundtracks but yeah maybe maybe one of those questions like should we cast ourselves <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> it's been a while since we've i cast think i'm ourselves. kind of like a star lord you know just kind no, of like Jared, the you are, leader you're, you're like the best one no i think i mean you're very superman i thought yeah, you know? yeah I think you're more there's superman. no superman so like you're, you could be adam warlock adam warlock because mm, you're yeah, our golden boy the golden jared God. star lord I'm still bummed Glenn Howerton isn't in these movies. I know. <laughs> Maybe he'll show up as a cameo so, oh, or something, man. but I, at this point, so. I Dude, doubt. it would have been so funny. If he had <laughs> he been the Adam Warlock, <laughs> oh, it would have been perfect. It would have been perfect. <laughs> oh. um, Niall, you're, is, is John C. Riley in these in the first one? He is, actually. Yeah, he that's who you are. <laughs> He's Thanks. one of the Nova members. <laughs> My favorite guardian of the galaxy is John C. Riley's side character. <laughs> Hey, it's better He's than funny. Close. He's funny in it. I just like when Niall gives me the main character and then I give him someone <laughs> who someone nobody knows who I'm talking about. I appreciate it. Niall, if That's I'm very... Star Lord, you're Gamora. Oh. Thanks, man. So we can uh oh, And I'm Drax then? Yep. Yes. Because um, you're killing the vibe. I'm killing the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh... No, but what's your favorite song? <laughs> Let's see. Favorite song. Mm, Scooby-Doo song is in one of these, right? Uh, Scooby-Doo song is not in one of these. I don't really. Let me look it up. Song uh, you threw this question on me too quick. I gotta, I gotta look up the songs. Yeah, I, yeah it's I've got like it's answers. Like the most... Yeah, okay, well, I don't know every song. Okay, I don't know every song. <laughs> not everyone oh, Jeez, every bro, song. it's hard for me to remember songs. <laughs> Knowing songs I, isn't the only thing. <laughs> I, I have a theory about a song that's in volume three. Okay. Um, because I heard some I heard a sound from it at the very beginning of the first trailer for it, but then it turned into another song. And uh hmm. if that song hmm. is truly in the third one, then 100 percent that's my answer. But um it's roundabout, but yes but um, <laughs> sure we it would also fit the guardians vibe it'd be perfect perfectly and i would love for everyone to know that song same same one of the perfect songs okay i think let me look at mine things. not because of the scene or anything but just when i go back and listen to the soundtrack it just sticks out you know it's not one that's super overplayed it's um i'm not in love by so 10 good. cc and the beginning of that song like and just all of like those kind of ethereal pad yeah. chords going on through the whole thing just give me chills. And it's very like space like fun. Space fun. It's very yeah, space, it's space fun. fun. It's space fun. Okay, answer quick Big because people fun. are just okay. waiting for you guys to look Fine. at it. Okay, my answer <laughs> is the chain. I really like that song. Ooh, a lot. Right. Good yeah. answer. So I like that they're in that movie. That that's a good movie. answer. And that's um, that's like the climax of the second one right yeah it's in the second one for sure. yeah, yeah that's like when they're one. fighting ego yes yeah i think oh, man i'm trying to remember the exact boom. moment i think it's as he's like turning into pac-man and all that like when he's really like tapped into his power 
Yeah. I think it's bef- right as that's starting, if I remember correctly. Do you guys think they're going to stick with that? Him being well, having he, powers, or did he lose that? I don't he know. lost them when Ego dies. Oh, okay. So, cool. Yeah, I would have I just kind of like it would have kind of been cool. <laughs> yeah, if he had had powers like from then on, but I yeah. get why they didn't. They want to keep yeah. him relatable, the relatable human guy. You know, Chris Pratt, man of the people. Oh yeah. Also, Our Mario, favorite Mario. Italian plumber. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everyone's favorite Italian plumber, Star Lord. Um, Chris Pratt. I'm struggling to find it on the platform that i'm looking for oh here we go here we go here we go here we go um the platform is bing yeah, <laughs> yes um Ooh child by the five stair steps great i just love that song definitely oh, I love that didn't song too. it before the movie yeah it's oh, it's integrated really well yeah to the movie as well and it's like the context of like the dance scene where it's like that's not the song that i really would have picked as like a dancing song for, like yeah. in my brain but it just fits that scene so well and it's like i just love it i love That's that great. song yeah i i haven't rewatched the second one many times i think i've only watched the second half of the second one uh on a rewatch but i watched the first one all the time and by all the time i mean like once every two years sure which is but i do honestly, like it kind That's of enough. a lot to rewatch yeah, a movie it is know? It's a good time. All right, guys. I think we've exhausted those movies. Yeah, I I really like them a lot. I think we've come to that conclusion that we all like them. But James yeah. Gunn has done so much more, He's like done Slither, so and much Super. more, like Slither and Super. Yeah, his two. Let's talk about DC Slither movies. for a second. I want to talk about Slither yeah. for one second. I like. <laughs> okay, Very now we're moving yeah. on. Um, my question has to do with the DC universe. Ooh. which maybe we should talk about last. So Niall, you do your question now. A perfect episode. I, well, I was going to say that maybe we talk about the DC universe next because mine is a little less based on actual reality. Yeah, that's I a fun, your that's question a is, fun so finale. That. So for those of you who don't know, James Gunn recently announced a piece. He said just a piece of the lineup for what his DC universe is going to be like. DC Cinematic Universe... I don't know exactly what the DCU stands for, but that's what they're calling it going forward. And so basically they're calling it gods and monsters. And it's going to start with Superman legacy, which comes out in July of 2025. Mm. So we're still over two years away from that even starting, but (laughs) um, otherwise, I mean, the stuff he announced sounds pretty neat. There's some like James Gunn esque stuff in there where it's like, I don't know what this is, but hopefully it's cool. So the movies are, Superman Legacy, The Authority, Batman, The Brave and the Bold, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Swamp Thing. Those are all movies. And the TV shows are Creature Commandos, which is an animated TV show. Waller, which is based on Amanda Waller. Ugh. (laughs) (laughs) The first reaction, positive or negative, is just (laughs) Okay, then we have a Green Lantern show starring Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart called Lanterns which is probably the thing I'm most excited for. I think that yeah. will be awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, Paradise Lost, which is a prequel TV show about um, the, like, Themyscira and all the, you know, all the Wonder Woman people. Yeah. And uh, Booster Gold. So, you know what? You know? you know what Paradise Lost makes me think of every time? What? This is not really, like, really, I just wanted to get this out of my head. Huh. I don't know why, because they're not related at all, but it always makes me think Apocalypse Now. Hmm. Yeah, Paradise okay. Lost, Apocalypse Now, like they just kind of, I don't know why. It's I feel like Paradise Lost is a book or movie or something like that. Is Possibly. it? Possibly. Could be. Might be. But anyway, <laughs> these all sound cool. And James Gunn is producing all of these with his co-producer, Peter Safran, who are now both running DC. Um, but you know which of these sounds good and fun to you guys because i'm excited for almost all of these um but what about you guys what what do you think sounds neat and rad so i'm really excited about first of all superman legacy yeah because i think if there's anything that will get me to like superman it will probably be james gunn being in charge of it yeah um because i'm not a superman fan (laughs) 
Um, so I'm I'm excited to see or Superman unless in a Lucas gets cast. Yeah, if I, yeah that's well, the well, other one that, yeah, would, well, that would turn you. Is it even really if at this point? It's kind of when. Yeah, it's, it's when. I mean, I'm I'm pretty confident in that. Yeah, yeah it's like we're it's a game, question so. of details at this yeah, point. Exactly. Um, but <laughs> I'm excited to hopefully get a chance to think of Superman as something other than just lame generic superhero you know Mm. um also speaking of characters that are not lame generic superheroes super excited about booster gold yeah i i think that character is such a funny concept and (laughs) like jared also clearly excited for those yeah. of you not watching, whoever that is, Wait, did you say is, is Booster Gold a TV show or it is. a movie? Yeah, it's a TV show. TV show. I feel like that fits. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, yeah, gonna be just kind of goofy comedy, whatever. Goofy comedy, uh, whatever. Jared, it'll be you silly. love goofy comedy, whatever. It'll be. I love like we've goofy established comedy, raunchy superhero shows. <laughs> sexy as well. You like sexy? <laughs> no, I only like my Halloween sure. costume sexy. Oh, I, I don't see, like I my shows sexy. That's right. okay. movies that raunchy. Make, that's my movie mistake. and TV costume shows sexy. raunchy. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. Yep, that makes total sense. That's okay. Sounds right. Just, yeah. Um, Peacemaker season two is also coming as well. So, oh, also, I guess I should have prefaced this um, with the Flash that comes out this year, which is technically not maybe a part of this whole thing. Um, <laughs> James it's resetting. Says that it's like his, yeah, it's like Sorry. resetting everything basically. So that's how Superman is going to be recast, and all this junk is just because the Flash, I guess, is just going to make everything go reset in that. James Gunn and everyone is just going to choose who they want to keep and who they want to boot. Yeah. And so if someone, some people say the same, it's like, oh, okay, cool. And if some people are gone, it's like, oh yeah, it's because when the flash happened, they just brought back a different <laughs> version of them. The, so yeah, the, flash happened, crazy. the flash happened oh. and now the flash is different because <laughs> Ezra Miller is a problem. Yeah. They've been um, talking like, oh yeah, Ezra Miller, there's still a possibility he could come no, back. But no I way. guarantee you the only reason they're saying that is because they don't want to cut the limbs off this movie before it comes out by saying, yep. oh yeah, that main character, there's no shot he's staying around because yeah. there's no way he stays around because he's committed heinous crimes. Yeah. Yeah. across the country for a year it's like <laughs> there's no way they keep it. at least yeah. they better not driving across the country with a bulletproof vest on <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i i also think it's worth noting james gunn has said that the flash is quote maybe one of the best superhero movies ever made which is not crazy. a chance which is a bold claim yeah <laughs> well tom cruise also chance. really liked it apparently for some reason, Tom Cruise. What's Tom Cruise his seeing opinion it, in know? the ring? I don't know. Again, he maybe he's in projects it. pretty well. Yeah, he he's. I don't maybe think he's he involved is. at all. Maybe he's playing Iron Man. Oh, <laughs> in the Flash. He can be playing Iron Man. He's so he's cool. the next Flash. <laughs> his run. <laughs> They're like, we want someone <laughs> young and related. That's yeah, great. dude, doing the Ethan Hunt run as the Flash. Let's go. That'd be pretty great. There. Okay. So with then that Cruise would the be DC, the best superhero movie ever <laughs> made. Let's be. That that it ends with Ezra Miller 100%. like running back in time, and he just like morphs his face, morphs to become Tom Cruise. <laughs> and then back. you've got all the film bros that are watching it, and they're like, "Did you guys know that Tom Cruise actually ran faster than than the, <laughs> the speed, speed of, of light?" light? And he replaced Ezra Miller in real life. Ezra yeah, Miller he does all of his own stunts. He so. does all of his own stunts. He likes to do his that own is stunts so too. funny. <laughs> um, Tom Cruise has long rumored to be a Hal Jordan, though, so maybe he shows up as Green Lantern. Oh. So that would be honestly, if they went with like an older Hal Jordan, that could DC be cool stuff. Yeah. yeah, with the pilot. Yeah, yeah the pilot, pilot thing as well. Top yeah. Gun Maverick. Hal pilot. Top Gun. Top Gun Maverick Green becomes Gun. Green Lantern. Green Lantern. Green. Oh, wow. It's the working awesome. title. <laughs> Top working Gun, title. Green Gun, Green Lantern. I'd go Green see Gun, it. <laughs> so, Jared, what about you? Do any of these even sound appealing at all? Or do you just totally not care? And that's a perfectly acceptable answer. Probably. I'll be I'll be honest with you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I I just am so superheroed out. And again, yeah. I, I'm Ant-Man? excited. No, I was superheroed out before Ant-Man, but that one did not help. <laughs> didn't help anything. It was well, like, what about Shazam 2? You saw that and you loved it. Shazam 2. I mean, 
Come on. You love it. Come on. You love it. Ten <laughs> minutes. Uh, yeah. Ten minutes. Yeah. 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 There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not excited for any of them, but I'm <laughs> I'm optimistic that there will be one that, you know, people are like, no, the overall general consensus is even if you don't like superhero movies, this is such a great movie, yeah. you know, and I and I'm, I'm hopeful of that. I'm hopeful there's a Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I'm hopeful movies, there's yeah. like, a, a you know, Soldier. Captain America Winter Soldier or yeah. a Spider-Man 2. That's just a, a beautiful, beautiful movie that's heartfelt and, and impactful. It just happens to be a superhero movie. And if it is, yeah, that's great. You mm-hmm. know? So, but I, I'm not excited or, you know, I don't care about the cinematic universe of DC. I didn't yeah. care about it upon its initial attempt. I don't care about Ten it on its ago. reset. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. The See, my thing is that the, the thing that makes me... Um, cautiously optimistic we'll say about this is that james gunn himself is a filmmaker before he's a producer and so yeah. he has come into this saying i've worked for dc and marvel already like i know their problems i know their issues and the biggest thing is that they don't put the writer and the director first and he's like that's what we're really going to emphasize is we're not just going to make something for the sake of making it i mean clearly like they're not like oh man obviously we have to make an authority movie people have been begging for it for so long we need a swamp thing yeah exactly (laughs) they're not these are these are not movies that people are like oh finally they're listening to us it's like stuff that they probably heard a really good pitch for or they already have a really good idea for and they're saying we're gonna make sure that this is made well or we're not gonna make it at all and so that is the correct way of doing things i think yeah. Um, and so because of that, that's why I'm optimistic because these because movies that, and shows I'm in. and because of, for these reasons, <laughs> for that I'm reason, in. um, and even just like a Batman reset and all these things, it's like, wow, huh? Very interesting. Yeah. Um, and James Gunn himself is a huge fan of comics, both like older and more modern Supergirl woman of tomorrow is a comic that came out like this year, I think. Right. And so it's cool that he's like adapting modern stories that he's read and he's passionate yeah. about. That's, so, that's true and um, you make a good case on that i think with if that is the case i think we're going to get more movies like the batman yeah and again that one was also great and mm-hmm. knew exactly what it was trying to do it was suspenseful it was interesting if that's what we're getting then i'm i'll be in more the batman's less joker 2019 <laughs> yes Although yeah. we are getting one more of yes. each of those, at yes, least. Yes, we are. So. Also, that's an important thing to note. Um, those movies, Joker, Folie à deux, and oh, uh, The Batman 2, um, Cold as Ice, hopefully. <laughs> no, it's um, just called The Batman Part 2. Yeah, well, we'll see. I hope it's uh, Cold as Ice. <laughs> Old as eyes. Well, uh, horrible it's like, title. It's well, like it's Mister Freeze. Yeah, hold it. He never says that. That's never a title of a Mister. You don't Freeze know thing. that that he never says no, that. I want what? something in the, the way, in the same like idea, the, like the <laughs> something in yeah, the but way, but it's cold, cold as ice. ice, and like it's incorporated <laughs> into the score. Sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, but listen, those movies don't exist under james gunn's umbrella of mm-hmm. control well they uh, well like like they do but, but they it's not part of the shared universe they fully outdo they fully yeah. outdo them <laughs> that's true madness for to um, um but, but they, yeah that that is a good point yeah, they will still like, make stuff that's like outside of the main universe yeah, stuff and they'll be clear to determine yeah. which ones are which he's business in charge of them and he's like producer in charge of them but they're not under any obligation to connect to anything or exist within like any certain boundaries that a cinematic universe uh, yeah. tends to create naturally or otherwise. And he said, they're going to be really apprehensive to make anything outside of the main universe yeah. uh, because that's like, well, we have this. And so it really has to be a good reason to exist outside of the uni- shared universe otherwise it'll just be start to get too confusing right especially so since, yeah and the know, script has to be like, like like great pitch great yeah, script really all that stuff. good script mm-hmm. and also necessary to exist outside of the universe 
So right. explains why Foley Adu is getting made because of course. Well, it was already getting made before he came in. So. Script. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But he I'm did greenlight honestly, the Batman too, so that that is good. I'm excited for Foley Adu. I know. I know. How can you be excited for it? <laughs> like, what I like the first one. Makes you like, oh man, it looks so cool. Like, I, I am like the first so, one. So, so excited. About... <laughs> I like Joker 2019. What about the idea or the casting or the premise of it being a musical? Like, every did single you, piece did that you I've heard. Here, though, did you hear the the explanation of the music. Oh, I've heard thing. it. And it makes me hate it even more. What what have you heard? I've heard that it's like all in his brain. And no, that like no, the no, musical no. is like, oh, they're going crazy together. And it's like, they're no, all that's little. that's not what world. I've heard. I've yeah, heard well, that oh, it we'll is, see. the musical element is like unto the, um, the singing like violation scene in Clockwork Orange. Oh, a movie I don't like. <laughs> sure i'm not saying that, i'm not saying that clockwork orange you need to like but if you know that scene it's not a have you musical. seen that scene yes. it's probably one of the worst things i've ever seen just like in terms <laughs> of like <laughs> like truly like disturbing and that's the point i get that that's the point of that movie and that scene but i'm like man why would you make this and be like oh hey look it's art when you're basically just actually sexually abusing someone and it's just so like barely Kubrick fans, not. Kubrick fans sound off in the yeah, comments. Yeah, Kubrick fans sound off. Very mm. classic lovers of Kubrick on the we'd podcast. We'd love to hear. All three we'd of love us. To hear oh, what yeah. Have to say. I've loved all of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You I, know who, you, whose I, films I have loved all of them? All of them. <laughs> uh, Niall. <laughs> James Gunn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Especially Slither and especially <laughs> Super. Well, hey, I've got a question. Let's if we're question. done talking about DC, I feel like yeah, we probably I think, are. Yeah, I think we've exhausted all that we need to talk about with that. I've exhausted myself for sure. I'm out of <laughs> Well, breath. I've exhausted you by berating everything you say. Yeah, well, like, I just think it's okay that I'm excited for fully I think, I think it is okay that you're excited for it, but I will say you're one of the few people who are actually looking forward to that movie. Yeah, that's okay. And that is anyway, okay. um... Here's a question for you about James Gunn. That's All it. about James Gunn. Not even a little bit about anything else, except for that it certainly is. It's about 50% about James Gunn and 50% about other directors and other movies. And it is as follows. Are you ready? Yes, so ready. If... Okay, let me figure out how to work this. <laughs> uh, James, yes, you can. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's on. That's on consider. par with Jared's question. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, consider uh, for a moment with me. Um, James Gunn once upon a time did a soft reboot of Suicide Squad, making the Suicide Squad, which is, um, just one trillion times better. Um, than the original oh yeah. yeah um so whether it's a soft reboot or a full-on remake what is a movie or even an ip that you just feel like would be in really good hands if it was kind of revived with james gunn you know what i mean yeah i'll, huh. I'll go first i'll have an answer that might make me make a uh, nile mad <laughs> Uh oh, Joker two. <laughs> <laughs> Just more Joker two hate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, my my first thought was uh, an intellectual property that's kind of like uh, he wrote the old Scooby Doo movies. I don't know mm -hmm. if we talked about that yet. Oh, I don't know. But if I got mentioned. um, like those are just childhood classics i think so for a whole good. generation and probably the generation who listens to this podcast yeah yeah um and so he's able to make like really really fun like characters you know in a world that's kind of cartoony okay and i think one cartoony world that has not felt cartoony is the transformers world <laughs> oh um, yeah that's actually a great idea so he's he's definitely made movies with really high budgets and he's contributed to really high, you know, CGI, like caliber storytelling. 
And so I don't know, seeing him kind of work with these characters who, again, are cartoon characters and just have fun, make fun characters and tell a fun story. You know, I don't think he'd, in, I don't know what, what he would do, but I would trust him to handle it well and not only maintain the source material, but really make something exceptional with it. Yeah. Um, like not like Transformers needs to be improved upon, but if it were in James Gunn's So hands, what I was getting at is it. that it does need to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have done better. It should have been more clear. Yeah, it should have been more clear. No, yeah, it's it, bad. <laughs> it's it's necessary that these movies are blotted out and reset and okay. we move on from them. Um, the other one that I think would be really fun in his hands, I really don't want to do superhero stuff, but I think um giving him something that has something to do with maybe more uh supernatural or like super like um fantastical elements is in his wheelhouse and so the other one i would think is if they were to and i, and I know they've tried this a couple of times but remaking ghostbusters mm-hmm. um i think his ability right to answer. have really funny characters who you care about who are well established doing fun work where i mean supernatural and scary work you know yeah exactly mm-hmm. like yeah there can He's be for sure movie. horror elements like slither mm-hmm. and so super, good have super we talked not, about slither yet not. come on we gotta guys, talk about slither slither guys. oh oh man where to even start no we don't have time we've all we don't seen have it. time we'll do a full episode later we'll cover it yeah we'll do a full episode too. on slither when james gunn <laughs> listens and he's like i have to know your opinions he's like tell me about slither oh man so those are my two answers good answers those are great answers honestly very good um since i'm next i will say one superhero and one non um if you can see behind me there's a cool little poster and posters of the x-men sports Um, illustrated magazine (laughs) no 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 no. if you're watching you know it's x-men See, look, it's X Men. If you're listening, it's X Men. If you're X-Men listening, too. it's it's you know, sports. No, it's, 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 X-Men. it's X-Men. like it's X Men. X Men. It's it's, it's like one of the enough that Jared would like it if it I'd watch it. it if it was adapted. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> don't don't let this episode go out. Don't let people know my secret. We have well, if they watch part. the video, then they'll know for sure. Yeah, then they'll yeah. know if. So this is a good way for to get you guys to watch the video. Yeah, fifty-two minutes in. <laughs> if you want to switch over to YouTube real quick. <laughs> hey, but the posters are behind me every episode. So mm-hmm. if you've watched any of the other ones, then you'll know as well. Yeah, uh, what's your you have to have gotten 50 your minutes, 50 just minutes. this week if there was a sports illustrated up on your wall. If there hey, was what's your answer? Say anyway, it. X-Men, because I think oh, he would do great oh. with X-Men. Um obviously it's Marvel, and so he's not gonna be doing it within the next 10 years or something, because I think that's his deal with DC for the next 10 years so he's gonna be with dc for a long time and it's an exclusive rights deal which means he's not making any non-dc movies for a while but even so you know in this theoretical world x-men would be awesome to see him take on you know just take a core group of like five or six characters like he did with guardians and then kind of expand them out through there it would be so cool he'd be great at it um beyond that though i think that he could make some really cool star trek movies because Mm, i personally really like the new star trek movies but they've just kind of been you know on hold for a while nothing and they're has really clearly happened looking for other direct like with the quentin tarantino thing like and they're Matt looking Shackman. for kind of a reset reboot yeah <laughs> not or at least to bring reboot, them back but like a reset yeah. of the of the the production end of things yeah i mean the fun could be a good pick what i love about star trek is when they never like i guess they they have rebooted it and recast characters yeah but honestly, they're just like, no, this is the story of this ship or mm-hmm. this ship. Yep. And they they can keep producing content and make it feel new and fresh yeah. in the and same And even the, the new movies aren't like a reboot, technically. Yeah. Because the like old Spock and everything. Like the first one, the I really. Continuum. Yeah, exactly. There's all the time warping and stuff like that. And That's right. <laughs> I really like the first and third. Like I just rewatched the third one last week and I was like, man, Beyond? this movie is cool. Yeah, Star Trek Beyond. It's very much just feels like, you know, a cool, really well-produced two-hour moment in their lives is, you know, adventure, space adventure crew of the uh, Enterprise. Yeah. And so it's it's great. But um, yeah, I think he could do a lot of cool stuff with Star Trek, especially because like Peter Quill and 
um jinx kirk like definitely have their similarities in terms of like you know yeah. they're the outlaw kid and they have to get themselves put together so they can lead their crew and then they end up doing a good job of it like even just that main character in both worlds would be cool to see him take on yeah would you want that same kind of like cast or would you want something different as far as like the current chris pine cast mm-hmm. I think he could do great with it. I mean, in this theoretical world, then yeah, that's what I would want him to pick up is just keep those guys. Gotcha. But in reality, he'd probably choose a new one and I'm sure he'd do a great job at choosing the new one. So cool. Yeah. either way, I'm going to say I'd be down. For no, it. I like that. Will Poulter as Captain Kirk. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Will Poulter as half the, the crew. Yeah. <laughs> he plays um, every character. He's big enough now that he'd take up that Cyborgs space. Cyborgs one through yeah. ten. <laughs> big um, like his mass. He just yeah, fills dude. the cabin. He's like, I am James T. A bulky little boy right now. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, of um, here's Sorry. my... Well, yeah. Yeah. He's not fat. Um, He's go not... look at pictures of Will Poulter. He's not oh, fat. All right. He's not He's fat. not fat. Let if there's go. one thing I know about him. You know who is fat? Jack Black. And no. that brings me to my next answer, oh. which is... Oh, um, man, Will Poulter is fat. I don't know what you're saying, bro. No, you're silly and dumb. Um, listen, though. Listen. Let's, let's listen. You ready? I'm ready. I'm going to lean into... Sorry. You guys have both kind of touched on things that he could do based on, the, you know, the supernatural stuff and the space stuff and, and all that stuff. I'm going to lean into the music stuff. And bring back an idea that I had in high school that I sent a, a, an email, I think, to Universal um, telling them to make, and they didn't respond to me. Oh, dude, that's a bummer, <laughs> um, but it's cool that you wrote it. Yeah, because um, I had a really good idea for a soft reboot of The School of Rock in high school rather than an elementary school with, like, basically like the kind of detention kids you know like like troubled youth Mm, and like a lemonade mouth situation sure but (laughs) instead of jack black you have dave grohl come in as like ex rocker um is he good at acting sounds like a dream that niall had one time (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, (laughs) just like this must be made and um, since it's a question that i asked i get to say whatever i want i love dave grohl (laughs) He is super charismatic. That's true. He is. Um, he, I think if he were in a situation, because I saw Studio 666. I was going to ask about movie. that. Yeah. Um, it was hard to watch. <laughs> um, it was truly bad. The thing that made it really fun was that I'm a big Foo Fighters fan and I like all those personalities, you know? Mm. And it really just seemed like something that they made for fun. It felt like a two and a half hour, well, not two and a half, and half hours. Um, <laughs> probably more like two hours. It felt like a two hour It felt like just video. a four hour, just fun little thing <laughs> well, they did it, together. It, it was an hour and a half, but it felt like a two and a half hour music <laughs> okay. video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man. Of, like, just because you get to see all their personalities and it's fun, right? However, I think Dave Grohl with a with a director like James Gunn, who can get performances out of people and and he knows kind of how to angle things, I think he could get a really solid performance out of Dave Grohl. I think it would be a fun story with a really cool and um good like like unique and approachable soundtrack with it. Um and I think it could be a really, really fun movie that needs to be made immediately um mm, i don't know about it needed that to be made immediately when i was in high school and i wrote the email who did you pitch as the director then i don't think i pitched i just, just said, said you want a story Dave that Roll. i think that you should have i don't want any money for it just make the movie <laughs> but then when the movie had come out you could have sued him because you had the email yeah but if the email i think in the email, in the email it did say oh you said that money. yeah oh, i'm not foolish. pitching for this to you as a business idea for me i just want to see this movie clearly if this movie had been made it would have made a billion dollars it would yeah, have been 100 percent. just about the best it'd be one of the biggest movies the highest time. grossing movie ever yeah. yeah well cool do you guys have any other james gunn related facts or news or trivia you guys want to talk about or ask that i have about james let's gunn. have a fun fact about him um the guardians we mentioned that you could feel the lack of james gunn in thor love and thunder and some of our more astute but less learned listeners may be thinking, well, wait a minute, Niall. They were in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, and that wasn't James Gunn, and they felt like themselves there. 
Well, you're wrong. It was James Gunn. <gasps> James Gunn what? wrote the dialogue for all of the Guardians characters in the Guardians scenes in those movies. Wow. Oh my gosh. And I love Very those ones. And cool. oh, that's so good. That is so good. Man, I did not know that, Niall. Thank you for learning me as an yeah. unlearned individual. I wasn't here's learning. another here's no, another fact about James Gunn. But from you were 2000, astute to hear that I to hear the potential I was yeah, you're correct. I was. I was. From uh, 2000 to 2008, he was married to Jenna Fisher, who plays Pam on The Office. Pam. Did you guys know that? I did, I did not, not know, know that. that. Yeah, isn't that wild? That is wild. And I don't think they ever collaborated. Like they never made anything together. Hmm, it's so, crazy. He's yeah. steering right yeah. away from that nepotism. You gotta love it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Business and family. Gotta be separate. Gotta keep them completely here's a, separate. Here's a fun fact. Let's that hear another fun fact. fact. James Gunn's hair is so white right now. <laughs> he dies. I, I, does he? He must. He's got to. Because, like, I feel like it was like starting to go gray and he was like, I'm leaning all the way into it. Yeah. Because if it really is as white as it is, he has had the worst 10 years of any person <laughs> alive <laughs> more than any president. <laughs> Dude, Obama didn't go that white. No. You know? Obama went like he got some white hair, but not that bad. Like James, James Gunn, Gunn went through being fired and then rehired by Marvel, you, which is yeah, worse yeah, than yeah. eight years of you the U.S. Like presidency. Could, well, low key, I don't think that he was ever actually fired. I have a conspiracy theory about. I him. do think he was actually fired because he immediately went to D.C. Yeah, but here's what. Listen, let's hear the conspiracy theory. I'm, now we're I think, down this rabbit hole. I think public facing, he was fired. But here's the thing: they were never going to give up his script. It no, was just him it was as director. Yeah. And there's there's the problem. He was being fired because of things that he had written as a writer. Tweet like tweets and yeah, lines like 20 and years old movies ago. and things like that. And so the issue is I think if Disney actually was planning on full firing him and never had a plan to bring him back, they would have said, we're getting rid of him, we're getting rid of the script, we're having a new script made, or we're not making the movie. But they were always like, we're still making the movie, same script, don't worry about it. And they were just going to wait for the public to kind of cool off about him and then hire him back. And that's exactly what happened. I think that that was even in the conversation with James Gunn, where it was basically like, hey, a little bit of a PR like firestorm right now. We're going to publicly let you go but we're still planning on bringing you back in to do this after people have calmed down a little bit. I'm going to tell you percent what I believe. I'm going to tell you why that's wrong. <laughs> and I'm not going to listen <laughs> because guardian three had a release date of 2020 originally, and they were about to go into production because it was summer of 2018. Right. So, well, maybe not quite start to go into production, but they were getting closer. They were amping up and there is no shot. Marvel was like, yeah, Go ahead and just go off and take a job at DC. Postpone our movie by three years. We don't mind. I don't. We think don't that, mind I don't that. Think that. I don't That's think that DC fine. knew. Also, Kevin Feige did not know that James Gunn was getting fired. He just was told and is like, "Are you kidding me? Like James Gunn? Is, what is wrong with you?" Because it wasn't even like the CEO of Disney. It was just some other subsidiary executive who saw the tweets and was like, "Oh no, bad PR. We got to immediately fire him." And so it was All just of an this insanely stuff is dumb move. From people who are being paid by Disney to talk to the media mm, i okay i mean you believe what you want to believe but that and i do giving their oh, okay so beyond that too <laughs> suicide squad gave him peacemaker which also gave him reigns of dc and so right. it's like why would marvel just be like yeah you can just become our biggest competitor we don't mind well i don't think they it's knew okay. at the time that he was going to become the ceo of <laughs> of, D, of the dc no no era. one did but yeah. it's like that that's I, I will say that Listen, that man. is a false conspiracy. Right, but you can believe whatever you want. I'm right. You can you're believe Joker Two okay. is going to be good. You can believe. <laughs> I don't that necessarily whatever. even think it's going to be good. I'm just excited for it. I'm excited okay. to see what it's going to be. I'll okay. Well, I I can say that I'm excited to see what it's going to be just because I'm so night, curious maybe. as to what it could possibly become. Opening night, the three of us. Oh. And some shows. Well, it comes yeah. out in October of 2024. Yeah. So let's do it. I don't think I'll Opening be around night. anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, well, yeah, I've we'll got a fun fact to, to leave you with right? that Because I'm getting James fired Gunn. by my original creators. They're going to fire me, make me go back to my original planet. Gotcha. But then a, nif a different competing planet is going to hire me for one small project. Then 
earth will rehire me and I'll come back, but it will have been a conspiracy. But it sounds like you've already found a passion project on another planet in Warhammer 40k. So you mm, might just uh, pursue true. that. And also abandoning my TV show that I had a passion for right. immediately after yeah. announcing I was coming back. Well, hey, thank you guys yeah. so much for listening. Anyway, yeah, we love. Well, we you can guys. end with another fun fact. Oh, that's uh, it. Did you guys know James Gunn directed Slither? Oh, don't <laughs> even get me. Started, you know what? Let's dude. actually let's get into our Slither conversation. Okay, let's yeah. talk about Honestly, Slither. I love.